HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for small business owners, sales professionals, business leaders, uh, and this is really due in a large part because of the guests. Uh, these are folks who have expertise in particular areas of business, and they join me to share that expertise with all of you. Today is no different. My guest today is Vlad Edelman. Vlad is the founder and CEO of Targetable, a marketing automation company that uses machine learning to program social campaigns for restaurants. Targetable has 20 employees, is projecting $3 million in revenue for 2020, and a big contact with a globally recognized brand, Buffalo Wild Wings, who I know here in Northeast Ohio we know very well. So thanks so much for joining me today, Vlad. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I, I, so we're going to be talking about um, automating your, your social, you know, d using uh, automation uh, for marketing. And I, I'd like to sort of get the lay of the land, if we could. Um, mm -hmm. Where would you say we are currently with marketing automation, uh, like machine learning tools? Like how much of a campaign can you really automate? Huh. Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I think that um, – the term marketing automation, first of all, is is kind of uh, you know in, incredibly all encompassing, and and uh, I think companies that do 
everything from programmatic ad buying, you know, the classic kind of uh, double click uh, ads that follow you everywhere till, till the day you die um, because you happen to click on one link. <laughs> um, and now you're, now you're looking at ads for plates that you didn't really want to buy. Um, all the way through to much more involved things, you know, that the term covers a huge universe. And so, you know, when we talk about marketing automation, it really, really depends on, you know, the target audience and what you're trying to accomplish, right? And so with, uh, with our customers, you know, um, who, who happen to be restaurants this, uh, this year, but frankly, you know, our goal is to really be the, the marketing automation company for retail, which is anybody with a physical address. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it really, uh, you know, it really, the focus is really about how do we um, do three things, right? Which really matter to physical retail, which is how do we get people into a physical location? Um, how do we get them to come back, which is called frequency? And how do we get them to buy as much as, as possible? right, which is check size. Yeah. And so, you know, when, when you talk about marketing automation, it's important to, to know the context in, in which, um, you know, you're discussing it. And in this case, we're really talking about those three things, right? And, and that's, to, um, you know, critical. So when we talk about where are we in the landscape, when it comes to accomplishing those three goals, we're pretty much nowhere. Um, you know, I think the majority of marketing automation, whether it's companies like Mercado or, uh, Eloqua or, or Blue Kai, you know, these are companies that have focused primarily historically on large brands, right? How do you get, you know, that, that retargeting ad that follows you everywhere? How do you get Coca-Cola to sell one more can of uh, soda? So, you know, the, the voices of the big spenders, you know, the, the Procter & Gamble's, the, the millions and millions of dollars per month, um, you know, spenders have been the loudest in the landscape and they've driven a lot of the innovation and a lot of the development and, and everything else. And we're focusing on the um, forgotten part of marketing automation, which is everybody from small businesses that, you know, maybe are one pizza shop on the corner of a street in Cleveland to uh, large franchise chains, which even though they have a large brand like Subway, who's one of our clients and, you know, uh, everybody knows, but are really operating at the end on an individual store level, like a small business and, and like that pizza shop in many, many ways. And so what, you know, what we do and what we focus on is really, you know, building a platform that services that customer segment uh, much, much more effectively than it ever has before uh, by building something that's really, um, you know, targeted and targetable, um, tar targeted and designed with, you know, their goals in mind and not trying to retrofit or re-architect an existing solution that was built for a large brand or, or a completely different context and kind of try to cram it in and make it, you know, sound like it works for, for um, our customers. And so I would say we're really at the beginning of the innovation around how do we you know, drive people into physical locations and, you know, how do we get them to spend and tell their friends and bring in more and more people. Um, and to do that, we've essentially virtualized an ad agency. And so we've created the first, what I would argue is the first virtualized ad agency in the world. What, explain that to me. I just, you, you don't want me to just finish there and let it hang. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I like to be mysterious, Dan. Right, no, um, exactly. right. <laughs> I like to invent technological terms and then just leave it for your audience to leave decide. Them go, right. No, no, no. So, so simply put, I mean, um, it, it means exactly what you would think it means, which is, um, you know, an ad agency, typically what does an ad agency do, right? It helps you create advertising. Um, it designs ads. It places those ads on, on, in places where your customers are most likely to be. It, it tracks and evaluates the efficiency of those ads and how well they're working and it, you know, rinses and repeats. And so <clears throat> what we did is we essentially built a platform that does all of that, right? And so, and it does that in a way that is very, very simple and very, very elegant um, for a very particular reason, not just because those two goals are, are worthwhile <laughs> in and of themselves, but really as a counter-programming to the fact that a lot of marketing automation tools are inordinately complex, right? And even the tools provided by the networks that drive traffic the most, let's say Facebook, 
Instagram, you know, Google for Business, Google Local, Maps, et cetera, where you can buy ads, their tools to be able to buy ads on their, on their platforms are also really complicated, even though they've been working for, for decades in some, in some, uh, at some points to, to make them simpler and easier to engage with. They're not, right? And so um, what, the, what the targetable tool does in, in this very simple and elegant way is once you log in with Facebook, that's really all we need to know where you are um, and who you are. The system uses that information um, coupled with enormous amounts of data that we gather on, the, on our end to create ads out of thin, thin air, right? And so within minutes of engaging with Targetable, most customers will have multiple ads already created for them by the system. Those ads are already pre-formatted to be uh, publishable on Facebook and Instagram. Um, they have been created with data in mind, meaning since I know where you are and who you are, I know a lot of things that will make an ad work better for you. Right, I know what the weather is. I know what the traffic patterns are. I know what the demographics are. I know many, 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 many things. And so I use all those things. The platform uses all those things to create ads that are really effective. And then what's um, you know, even, even more uh, effective is the fact that once those ads are created, you can of course edit them and do whatever you want to them. We provide terabytes worth of you know, uh, art and uh, media libraries and all sorts of things you can use to, to augment the ads or create new ones. You click publish and the ads go to Facebook and Instagram and, and are published through their system without you having to, to go through that rigmarole. And the system then monitors those ads and figures out you know, how effective are those ads and, and starts to help you create better and better and better ads and publish more and more of them and really uh, become that agency in a box that for a couple of hundred bucks a month is doing the work that an ad agency would be doing for five thousand seventy five hundred or even ten thousand dollars a month and so that's really the magic kind of of, of what we've created and are now growing and, and evolving and adding more and more features to which is you know you don't need to you don't need to spend what you used to have to spend or engage um, at the level you'd have to engage with an agency to create better results Okay, and, and it, <clears throat> it feels to me like one of the valuable parts of machine learning is that over time, the system uh, learns to adjust absolutely. to the audience, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, we like to say that, you know, that, that first ad campaign that the system creates for you um, and the first time you kind of log in, that's the stupidest the system will ever be. Right, because it doesn't actually know you, it's just it's starting to get to know you. But the true value is the longer you engage, there's two ways that the system really gets smarter. Really, there's three ways, but there's two that are really relevant here, which is the longer you, you work with the system and the longer it creates ads on your behalf, it's analyzing those ads, it's figuring out what's working, what's not working. It's scouring the internet for information about you. So for example, you know that pizza shop in Cleveland that, that logged in, and, and open an account, that first, that first second where, where the system got to know that uh, customer, the system went out and it, and it found everything about the customer that exists, right? It scraped every Facebook review, it scraped every Yelp, OpenTable, TripAdvisor, Google uh, review out there. And so it's paying attention to things like keywords that say that it's family friendly, right? It's looking for keywords about, uh, service level. It's looking for keywords around anything that is descriptive about the business. And so the ads that it creates for a pizza shop, you know, that is, you know, around a, let's say, a military base is very, very different than the ads that it creates for a pizza shop that's close to a high school, right? And those ads, the way that it gets smarter about those customers is uh, in, in actually running ads and seeing how well they perform and, and, and all sorts of other things. But the important piece is that it's also getting smarter about the entire segment of pizza shops, the more ads it runs for both of those shops, right? And so there's two ways that the system evolves and gets smarter with you. It's, it does it on an individual business level, 
Um, but it also does it systemically, right? And so, you know, now, even today, we've only launched about three months ago, but, you know, we already have uh, tons of similar restaurants and, and businesses um, as customers. And the system overall is getting smarter and smarter about entire uh, verticals and entire segments of customers the longer it engages with those kinds of businesses. And so it's yeah. a really incredible, that's how AI works really, right? But it's an incredible yeah. um, geometric impact on the effectiveness of the system itself. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and, mm -hmm. and then we'll... No problem. We'll Somebody's on. got to pay for all this. And that's exactly right. <laughs> uh, Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Everyone Deserves a Great Manager by Scott Miller and The Ultimate Sale by Justin Goodbread. So visit audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Vlad Edelman about automating your social campaign. So, Vlad, what, what would you say is the biggest marketing automation mistake that small business owners make? Well, I mean, to be honest, small business owners don't use marketing automation. Um, you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, marketing automation is really something that's been the purview of large brands with million dollar budgets because, you know, for automation, to do automation in the way that, you know, before we existed, essentially, you need to spend a lot of money. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the idea of marketing automation, of automating your ads, of, of testing, uh, A-B testing uh, language, of using machine learning to fine tune something that, you know, can make the difference between an ad that brings in five people and an ad that brings in 15 people, um, you know, is something that is uh, and used to be very, very expensive and very time consuming because it was done by humans. But what we've realized is that humans are the worst at, at, at doing this because this is really something that was built for machines, right? Robots, you know, are much better at analytics and data. And, and frankly, they, they don't come into work at an agency hungover or tired or just broken up with somebody. So their, their work is never inconsistent. And so um, what I will say that a lot of our customers, the mistakes that, that they make that, um, you know, I think is, is really interesting, which is it's the true success with automation and true success with local marketing in general is really a question of frequency and persistence, right? And so I think a lot of um, business people, small business people make the mistake of they'll work for weeks to create an ad where using usually their cousin who's really good with computers or, you know, maybe in a small agency or something like that. And th that process usually takes them so long and, and, and takes so much out of them because, by the way, there's this weird assumption that just because you're a good business person and you run a successful restaurant or, or, or clothing store or shoe store, that you also are going to be a wonderful digital marketer as well, which is absurd, right? I mean, I think everybody, yeah. you know, unfortunately, marketing is that kind of profession that everybody thinks they know how to do. Nobody walks into a hospital and says, hey, you know, I'm going to... Uh, do some neurosurgery today because I watched some YouTube videos, but you know, there's plenty of people will, will do that with marketing, but getting back to your question, you know, the, the, that ad that they create, you know, it'll take so much time that, yay, you know, they created it and then they'll publish it. Well, that's not what is actually, that's not how, how successful marketing works. Successful marketing is doing the right thing over and over and over and over again. It's frequency, right? It's, it's, it's running not one ad a day, but 10 different ads a day and just figuring out which ones work and then rerunning those and tweaking something else. It's a question of uh, constant and consistent attention, um, experimentation, and, and uh, spending, right? And so, you know, this, the, one of the big things that Targetable solves is put aside all of the artificial intelligence and machine learning and all of the fancy stuff that we do. One of the things that we do that has uh, uh, one of the greatest impacts on success 
is we're just consistent. You know, we do the right thing at the right time over and over again on behalf of the customer, addressing the mistake that they make, which is that they'll often just do the right thing once. And that's, that's not enough. That's just the first step. Do you know what I mean? Is that, is that more yeah. confusing oh, than yeah. the answering? Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because th that's something of... that if we run into anything, we run into that all the time, which is, hey, yeah. I figured this ad out. It's great. I'm running it. It's like, well, where's the next one? Where are the next 10? You know, right. <laughs> you know because. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And that's where, that's where things get complicated and that's where things get really difficult. It's not, it, it's ultimately not that hard to create one good ad, right? Um, what's really hard is creating hundreds of them and running them. Uh, over and over again and figuring out who should be seeing that ad when and where and the answer changes constantly depending on the conditions right <clears throat> right right and I and I I mean <clears throat> I think one of the things you said is so um, valid is that for some reason every small business owner thinks they're supposed to be really good at marketing when uh, you know why I mean, just yeah, exactly. You have to do, yeah. Just because you know how to make a pizza, and by the way, a great yeah. pizza, and I'm not, in the, I'm not in the slightest downplaying, you know, the the difficulty of sure. what a lot of these guys do every single day. Right. But the reality is, you know, you don't design your own building, right? Even though you 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 are a business that's in a building, you're not an architect, right? And you're not an right. interior designer, and you hire people for all these things. But with marketing, more so than with anything else. And, and with something that is, by the way, so critical to your success, we see so many of our customers, you know, just using, and I'm not even joking, it's, it's actually terrifying, which is they're using, you know, their cousin's kid who built a really, who's, uh, right. who's on Facebook all the time. So I'm sure he knows how to do that. Like, yeah. would you trust your, your cousin's kid to design the building so that it doesn't fall down and kill everybody? You know, would you, would you trust them with the ovens that bake the pizza? No, but you'll trust them with Facebook ads that bring people into your restaurant and right. are critical to your success and your revenue. You'll yeah. trust the, the weirdest, you know, people for that. Yeah. Um, yep. Absolutely. <clears throat> so what advice would you give to someone who is just starting, just starting their business when it comes to marketing automation? Well, I would even say a little more broadly, you know, when it comes to, to digital marketing, right? I think um, two things. Uh, one is uh, make sure that you think of the marketing the same way and with the same level of attention, focus, and uh, seriousness that you do every other piece of your business, right? Marketing is not an afterthought. If you don't really think about how you're going to market this business to whom, how are you going to find your audience? How are you going to get them to come into your location? How are you going to get them to spend you know, money when they're in your location, whether you're selling shoes or, or pizzas or, or you know, serving dinner? So many of our customers just don't give it enough thought you know, and just haven't really figured it out. It's an afterthought. And that is an absolute... Um, recipe for disaster because yeah. when you're trying to do this on the fly you panic there's chaos there's millions of other things going on and suddenly you're 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 trying to stop bleeding instead of uh, proactively you know figuring out the plan and the other thing is that we see is chronic chronic underspending on marketing right and and the reality is there's a very set formula that large businesses and, and, and businesses with entire business analytics wings do. And, you know, it's, it's very particular. It's usually depending on the type of business as much as 5% of your top line to, you know, half of that, but still, you know, uh, a substantial. So let's say 2% of your top line revenue needs to be spent on digital marketing, not on Valpac and radio and things that are actually slower and slower or becoming less and less relevant, <clears throat> but on digital local advertising. And what we know from, from use cases and from, from data that I'm happy to share with you at some point, which is, look, you know, the impact of effective local marketing is huge. You know, we've got customers who after 90 days of, you know, just running uh, ads through Targetable and having the system work on their behalf, you know, generating 10, 11, 12% lifts in their overall revenue, monthly revenue. You know, for an average restaurant making 750000 a year to a million, that's that's real money. That's seventy-five thousand to a hundred thousand dollars in additional revenue coming in, 
Um, and, you know, off of a system, you know, we, we cost them only a couple of thousand bucks a, a year, right? And so we're very right. cost effective. But even if it's not us, I, would, I can't say strongly enough that businesses, the number one problem we see is that they're just not spending the right amount of money, <laughs> you know? And, right. and right. you know, if you spend little and you don't do it often, you get very little results and you don't get them very often. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> there's no flow. There's, there's no momentum with it. That's, that's a great point in terms of like you, you don't give the system and, and the process a chance to build up, right? Actually, I'm really, right. really glad you brought that up because that is the other byproduct that's really important, which is marketing also works often like a, like a snowball, you know, going down a hill, which is the message mm-hmm. builds in the customer's cool. mind. It, it gets reinforced. It gets, you know, spread, et cetera. If you run one ad a month, uh, you know, and, and hope that that's going to, you know, create a miracle, it's not. It's it's really about consistency and the proper lo- level of spending and doing it over a long enough period of time to generate res- results. And when you do right. generate results, by the way, they're very material. Um, and I can't say that strongly enough. Yeah. Now, is there is there any sort of um, like <clears throat> collateral damage, like human fallout from marketing automation, <clears throat> like you know job <clears throat> loss, things like that? Well, I think like with anything, um, you know, I really like to look at us kind of as the next wave of of virtualization services, right? I mean, I think early on, you know, the first wave are things like Uber, right, or Airbnb, where, you know, the process of creating a dispatch, you know, for for cars was virtualized by Uber and and displacing a lot of, you know, taxi dispatchers and and, and people who did that. Airbnb, Airbnb. Um, you know, it's another good example, right? It's displacing a lot of, um, you know, agents and, and people who, who did short-term rental work. But the reality is, if you look at what's happening um, in that industry, you know, the people that are getting displaced are, are you know, new opportunities have been created in, in the vacuum, right? And so I've run into many people now who are using Uber as a way to create their own mini dispatch, um, you know, uh, uh, companies where they have multiple cars, but because they don't have to pay to, to hire dispatchers and everything else, they can grow a, a, a fairly substantial business far quicker because Uber is doing the hard lifting of the very rote, hard, low, low, you know, um, value work that right. you know, human beings used to do. We're doing the same thing, right? At the, at the ultimate level, media buying and planning, which is what we're replacing, quote unquote, when it comes to agencies, it's the least profitable work that an agency does, right? And often it takes that work in order to get the higher margin creative work, strategy work, and all sorts of other things. And so what we're seeing, and as we talk to agencies, you know, yes, ultimately we'll be displacing some media buying and planning, but we're also giving agencies um, and owners and, and customers the opportunity to not have to worry about that and actually be able to focus on the much higher margin, much higher value work that is now open for them to do because they don't have to do what we do, right? And so we, we, we've spoken to many, many ad agencies that are excited about our product as a way to free up time to focus on message and brand and, and brand building and, and much more in-depth creative work and much better use of a client's money, frankly, than to use it to do the block and tackle work of media buying, planning, and, and the analytics of that. Leave that to us. Yes, we'll display some, some folks who do that today, but those folks will have jobs. It will have the opportunity to work on much better, much more impactful work, both for themselves um, and for the customer. Got it. Really very few things, very few things, unfortunately, that bring change and, yeah. and kind of, I, I hate the word disruption at this point. I think it's just uh, yeah. uh, kind of a cheap, cheap shortcut way of saying, you know, change. But, yeah. you know, when, when things change, what we're trying to do is we're trying to change the way that retail markets itself. And there's always going right. to be your user point collateral damage in that. But if you don't look at that as damage, but look at that as an opportunity, um, to, to really, you know, refocus, then a lot of doors open up. And I think that that's yeah. a way that uh, more and more people are looking at it. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, I appreciate the information. Will you tell the listeners, uh, you know, how they can find you 
and about and uh, you know targetable. So, <clears throat> sure, I always say that I don't want anybody to find me. I want them to find targetable. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter, etc. But what I'd love for um, your listeners to do is just go to targetable.com, spelled the way that you think, T-A-R-G-T-A-B-L-E.com, and check us out. You know, it's very, very, um, it's very, very affordable to dip your toe or month to month, no results, and you don't have to stick with us. So give us a shot. We'll do a demo. We'll show you how the platform works, and we'll take care of your ad, ad needs for you. So check us out. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And listeners, thank you. Uh, you, of course, are who we're doing this for. And I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Audible.com. To get your free trial of Audible.com as well as a free audiobook, just go to audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth to sign up. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. <laughs> Powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous walrus, the bulbous walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. We are Jackie Clayton and Katie Van Horn, co-hosts of the Inclusive AF Podcast. We're two diversity, equity, and inclusion peeps who love both what we have in common and what makes us different. During the day, we use our superpowers to block bias and break down systems that are inequitable within companies and create inclusive AF places to work. We're also BFFs who have tough conversations about our different lived experience. Come have a listen and learn something new.